Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Space Warrior for the Nintendo Switch. Now at a release price of only $5, Space Warrior would definitely be what I call a budget entry in the space shoot 'em up type of gameplay. But as you know, on the Nintendo Switch eShop, because of all the competition out there, being budget isn't just always enough. So today we'll figure out if Space Warrior is worth investing your $5. Now just before we start up the review, don't forget that the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. First of all, although Space Warrior is a standard side-scrolling space shoot 'em up it actually does a pretty decent job of inputting little tidbits of storyline here and there. Now there isn't much, it's only a few lines of dialogue pretty much on every stage, but it actually does a pretty decent job of progressing the storyline and indicating to you why you're facing the challenges that you are at each different level. Now, at the beginning of the storyline, you will have a choice to choose either a female or a male pilot, but the only impact in the overall gameplay will be who will be delivering basically the calm information to you. So if you choose the male pilot, well, basically the female character will be the one on the comms and vice versa. Now, gameplay wise, Space Warrior has a very responsive and crisp control scheme. All the while staying through to the genre and giving you the feeling that you are piloting a ship that is navigating through space. Now, Space Warrior does a really nice quality of life upgrade in the fact that the ship is always on auto fire mode. You do not have to hold the fire button down. It is constantly firing at its maximum fire rate. And this is a really interesting choice that I overall really ended up appreciating because let's be honest, in space shoot 'em ups unless there's a specific reason why you would be using your fire button in a different way, let's look at our type where you have to charge the weapon, you're pretty much just holding down the fire button the whole time. Well, this game for quality of life doesn't force you to do that because the spaceship is basically always shooting. Now for the rest of the gameplay mechanics, it is pretty straightforward. You'll be shooting down enemies, they'll be giving you coins which you'll be using later on to upgrade your ship, and you'll also get colorful orbs which are your power-ups. The power-ups are using an interesting and once again very simple design where basically if you collect three power-ups of the same color you unlock one of your different power-ups that are basically either on the Y, X or A button and vary from ship to ship. Which power-up you get is basically dependent on what color of orb you were collecting. Now if you start collecting orbs of varied color at the third orb, your basic two first orbs will become wild cards, and whatever fourth orb you collect will then become that colored power up. The system does get a little bit of getting used to, and you will sometimes have to let some orbs go by just to not get the wrong color of power up compared to whatever you would want to pick up. But once you get used to that system, it is very smooth and it works very well. Another important thing to note is that when you collect that power up, it doesn't activate right away. It goes into your stock at the bottom of the screen and you then have to activate it, as I said previously, with one of the power up buttons. If you already have a power up in stock and you collect another version of that power up, well, at that point, it will activate right away, not eating up the one you have in stock, but rather using that new one that you just picked up. Now, beyond that, as I said, the abilities that you will unlock with these power ups will vary from ship to ship. If you take your first basic ship, the Y button will recharge your shield, the X button will give you a multi-fire weapon, and the A button will give you a more powerful single-fire weapon. But each and every ship is equipped with its own set of power-ups. Now, if we talk about general progression through the game, once again, they're doing something quite original here. Now, to progress through the game, you have to upgrade your player level. However, your player level is not necessarily directly related to finishing stages. Rather, it's related to finishing the objectives that you have on the launch screen of each of those stages. So theoretically, you could upgrade your player level without ever finishing a stage. Of course, some of the objectives you won't get because some of them are clearly just finishing the boss at the end of the stage, which pretty much means completing that stage. But nonetheless, those objectives are few and far between and you can still complete the majority of them without actually finishing the levels. Now, I'm not saying you won't finish those levels. I'm just putting it into context that finishing the levels is actually not your main objective in this game, but rather accomplishing the various objectives that they give you on the launch screen. Another fact that is very important to note is that each and every one of the stages has three different difficulty levels, 
with three different set of objectives. So if you want to be able to progress further on in the game, you will ultimately have to replay the stages at least on a second or a third difficulty each one. Now, if you're worried that this becomes redundant, don't worry at all, because the stages are actually very well designed, go by quick enough where you don't get fed up by the end of it, and overall playing through them three times feels actually pretty good. Now, you will have to ultimately grind out a couple of the stages if you want to get all of the objectives, because some objectives are around playing the stage multiple times, but overall, very rarely does a stage or a level overstay its welcome. Now, the second thing that the player level does is that is ultimately what decides when you can buy a new ship, because the new ships will only unlock at a certain player level, where then you have to invest a certain amount of coins to buy that ship. And while we're on the subject of the ship, it's also important to note that in between the stages, you can upgrade each one of the ships, investing some coins into upgrading the shields or each one of its power up weapons. So the game isn't only about buying new ships, it's also about upgrading the ones you already have. Now, I've got to say that if this sounds like a lot and a very deep system for only a $5 eShop game, that is the overall impression I got as well. And it was way more than I was expecting but not on a bad note, on a very good note. I really wasn't expecting such a deep progression system and such a system that actually works pretty well in a budget $5 eShop game. Now, if we move on to the overall visuals in the game, I've got to say, once again, I was stunned. For a budget game, they have some really beautifully rendered 3D background visuals. And they're not only there for show, if you actually pay attention to the backgrounds, it's a living world and you'll often see even the bosses that you're about to face later on the stage make an appearance halfway through the stage. You'll see battles happening in the background. These are living and realistic backgrounds. The enemies were also varied and very distinct and very well designed. I'll be honest, the only thing that disappointed in me slightly is the boss design so far seemed a little bit too simplistic and easy to defeat. But other than that, the overall design of the game and the enemies are very, very interesting. Now, the music, although it won't be iconic, does a very good job of meeting up with the gameplay. The only thing that I came across that was a little weird were some awkward moments of silence. It's normal in these games that before you get to the boss, there's like a sort of moment of silence before the boss track starts up. But during this gameplay, those moments of silence sometimes lasted like 30 to 45 seconds and seemed really awkwardly paced. But other than that, the overall sound design on the game is once again pretty good. Now overall, for a $5 space shoot 'em up on the eShop, I think we're getting a really, really good package here. And it's really hard to point to some things that I found disappointing, but I will mention nonetheless two little points that were minor annoyances. First of all, in pretty much every one of these games with 3D rendered backgrounds, you get those awkward moments where you don't know if a specific enemy or a specific item is part of the background or it's part of the foreground. And that does lead on occasion to a few cheap deaths where you ram into something that you thought was part of the background but was actually part of the foreground. And the reverse situation also happens where you're trying to dodge around an obstacle that you're almost sure is in the foreground when then you realize that you could have flew right straight through it because it's actually part of the background. Now, it isn't rare for these games to have this problem because that is the issue with 3D rendered backgrounds. If you want them to be immersive and feel like you're actually part of the stage, well, unfortunately, they become a little confusing. And if you do things like using different color schemes, well, you sort of lose that immersiveness. But overall, although there were a few awkward moments like that, I do think that the game does balance it well. I just want to let you know you'll come across those. And the second minor grievance I have with this game is that it actually gives you no direction on how to actually progress through the game. Everything that I explained to you in the progression system, I had to figure out on my own. Now, once again, for these type of space shoot 'em ups it's not rare that they don't give you full tutorials or things like that. But this game actually indicates nothing at all in its progression system. It doesn't let you know that you need to focus on the objectives and not necessarily completing the stages. And probably the biggest point of contention, it doesn't let you know that there are multiple difficulties to each stage. Once you actually figure out how you change those difficulties, it sort of becomes self-evident and you wonder why you didn't notice it before. But I myself 
played through the first stage on the first level of give difficulty almost three or four times before realizing that there were multiple difficulty levels with new objectives and that's how i actually managed to progress past stage three so i'm not asking for like a one hour tutorial but maybe a couple of minor directions indicating that hey these are the objectives you should be focusing on and after you're done with a stage how about you try a harder difficulty level like just by inputting those two statements somewhere during the gameplay you could have solved all those minor issues but i gotta say that when i dropped this five dollars i wasn't expecting much and i was pleasantly surprised by what i got overall so now let's move on to the verdict now if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos just to let you know i don't give a numerical score i give an overall statement on whether i think you should be picking this game up or not if you want to see what all those different statements that I use are and what they mean, they're down below in the description of the video. And in the case of Space Warrior, I'm going to be giving this game a definite pickup. Look, if you're into space shoot 'em ups and you have only $5 to spend, right now at full price on the eShop, I actually can't think of a better game to spend it on than to spend it here on Space Warrior. Now, some other games when they're on sale sometimes could compete with this one, but at its regular price, I really can't think of a better option for a side-scrolling space shooter. And although I picked up R-Type Final 2 this week, which if you don't know is one of the longest standing space shooter series, I actually delayed starting that game because I was enjoying Space Warrior so much and I wanted to work my way through the whole game and the whole content. And if I'll be honest, the only thing keeping this game from actually being a hidden gem is a little bit of a lack of innovation because there was really nothing new that I saw in this game. And that's what I was looking for to actually hit that hidden gem level. But at the same time, it does everything it does very well and has some really nice and varied levels and gameplay. That's pretty much it for my review of Space Warrior. If you do pick up the game, I'd like to know what you thought of it. Please leave it down below in the comments. And as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button, Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.